Well, hi, and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host, Ken Keith. I'd like to welcome everybody on Vimeo and YouTube in the U.S. and around the world that's tuning in today. We appreciate you dropping by. Well, you know, we've uh, talked on several of the uh, various tutorials that we've done over the last couple of years about image blending, you know, using layers, uh, using uh, masking. But, um, you know, there's a time that we would like to do something with an image, and especially if we're into things like web design or just, just imaging in general, where we're doing some creative things, in which we would like to use something like a logo. And when we import that logo, it has a, a large area of white around it. And we would really like to get rid of that background white and just make this logo um, just where we can overlay that with some transparency rather than with the white background and going in and, and trying to get rid of that and all. And I wanted to share with you uh, a tip today in, in, as far as how to do that. So I've got my own logo up here and unlike it's normal it, it has the the white background and uh, a white border. And what I would like to do is to overlay this logo on another picture, but I would like to be able to get rid of that border, see through some of this white area, and just leave that as a transparency. And then we're going to save that as a transparency in a different way than maybe what you have seen before. So let's do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab our magic wand tool. And I've got contiguous checked here in in this uh, area right here. And the reason for that is there is white within the logo itself that I really don't want selected. Now I'm going to use contiguous. What I'm tr trying to achieve here is just to uh, get rid of this and get rid of some of the white in here. And, and of course, you could always crop out this, this white border, too. But just for illustration purposes, let's do it this way. And you can see how that would apply to some of the things that you may be doing in your imaging. So I'm just going to uh, use the Magic Wand tool and click there. And you notice that that selection is picking up uh, a lot of this white that's in here, which is what I wanted it to do. And now what uh, you really do is you select the part of the logo that uh, you don't want, that you want to throw away, in other words. And, and to do that now, I'm going to go up to the Select menu and select the word Inverse. So the inverse of all this selection would be the main logo itself, and in this case, the, the leopard spots. So there we go, Inverse. And now we're going to put the real selection, the part that we want to keep, on its own layer. Now, you know, we've talked before about doing uh, Control and J, or Command J for you Mac users, uh, to put a selection on its own layer. But what we're going to do, we're going to hold down our, our uh, Control and Shift and J, and that throws that up on its own layer without the white background. And if you want to see that, you can just uh, cycle off the little eye icon here with the background and there it is you see the little symbols that indicate that this is transparent pixels so now the border's gone and all the little white area within the, between the leopard spots is also gone and then what you can do is just you don't need the background layer anymore so we're going to click on that and we're going to drag it right to the trash can all right and then if I wanted to overlay that I'm going to put it on this picture, for example. So you're going to drag and drop it in, and there it is. It's borderless, and we have the little um, the leopard spots in there, and you can see behind it in the background. And if I want to move that and rescale it you know, like this, and click OK. All right, so when we've when we finished with that, let's say we would like to use this logo again uh, with that transparency. So what we'll 
what we want to do is I'm going to go uh, I'm going to X out of that and save it now save it as a PSD file so I can go back and uh, make changes as I, I like there what we'll do here to make this reusable uh, with the transparency we're going to go up to file and save as and this time instead of saving it as a JPEG or Photoshop file let's scroll down and select PNG which is also called a ping file and what this does uh, it it allows you to maintain transparency and for those of us who are doing image editing all the time the advantage of using PNG other than the fact that it preserves transparency is that it's a lossless compression it supports 48-bit color and 16-bit grayscale plus if you're doing things like saving restoring and resaving images there won't be any image degradations and if you save these things as JPEGs uh, that's something that will happen and also if you save this as a JPEG you're going to uh, not be able to have that transparency it is going to be white again in those areas All right. PNG like I say pronounce ping and just for your own information that means portable network graphics and if you'd like to read about that some more if you're interested you can just go ahead and google up PNG file format and you can get a full history on it if you're uh, technically bent and you'd like to uh, see some additional data on how it's used. Okay, now to wrap up is something that's uh, not related, but I've had some questions about this and I wanted to go over it even though we have alluded to these things sometimes in the tutorials. Let's just uh, uh, answer those questions from the viewers out there. And this has to do with your rectangular and elliptical marquee tools. All right, your marquee tools live right here. There's a little nest of two tools, the rectangular one and the elliptical one. And as we've discussed before and reiterate here, as you draw out your selection, let's say that you have decided that you really st started in the wrong place. And you don't have to start over. You can if you want to, just by undoing it. But instead of doing that, just hold down the space bar and also you have to be holding down your, your mouse. You can just move it around as you like. Once you let up on the space bar, if you need to change the width, the height of your selection, you do that. Hold down the space bar again, move it. And the same thing, of course, applies to the elliptical mark key tool. So the next thing we want to do is with these two tools let's make two more tools for selecting and one is by here's uh, with the rectangular marquee tool all you would have to do then is hold down the shift key as you draw and instead of a rectangle you get a perfect square if you are selecting the elliptical marquee tool and you hold down the shift key in, instead of a, an oval you get a perfect circle and then the next thing I wanted to mention here is that your anchor point for starting one of these uh, marquee tools uh, by default is wherever you do your initial click so if I do it here it's going to expand outward from that point but let's say for example that you are are doing something in which you'd like to be precise and make that selection starting from a certain point but instead of that being the anchor point where you click your anchor point is actually the center of the selection so that it comes outward in all directions as you drag out so just before you start drawing hold down the alt key or the option key for you Mac users and there your selection will come out right from the center. I right. uh, just wanted to mention in passing that 
We're using Photoshop Elements version 9 today, and that's the most current version as of this recording date, which is February 6, 2011. Thank you again for dropping by. I hope you have a great week ahead, and we'll look forward to talking to you in another time. So, have a good week. Bye-bye now.